Good evening and welcome to MFTB Sports Channel, or as it is for one week only, MFDP. DP. A special yeah. guest this week because Tom's sunning himself in sunny Spain. Lucky devil. Yeah, I know, yeah. So, he is lucky, isn't he? Whereas we're in sunny old culture stuff. Well, it's, it has been nice, hasn't it? So, can't yeah, grumble. can't grumble too much today. But we're doing our Azerbaijan Grand Prix review and then shortly we'll do our Singapore Grand Prix preview as well because we've got back to back. And then we go into a month's break. Again. Mm. Yeah. Another month without F1. Oh. So, um, shall we get straight to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix? We shall, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> no, it was um, quite an exciting Grand Prix, actually, I thought. I thought it was a good race. Yeah. It, it certainly livened up towards the end as well, but... Yeah. Um, I, I was. I spoke to you earlier and um, I said about the... Um, TV coverage was more focused on the front, so you didn't bit, really it? see a great deal of what went on, sort of apart from the three up front, really. But um, still exciting, nice to see three different teams up the front racing. So close together, weren't they? I mean, yeah. at one stage, the three cars at the front were covered by eight tenths of a second. I know, and my prediction of science, he was coming in until he. Smashed it up. Smashed it up. <laughs> we should so, get predictions. Should we get this bit out of the way? Because well, I'm not going to be here, so I've got to talk for Tom, haven't I? Really? Well, we can have. A, we'll have. A, I'll let him do the. We we'll do the predictions bit for Singapore, but right. we should get the Azerbaijan one out of the way because I know he'll be chomping at the bit when he's watching this. Cause yes. Tom got it right. So well that's, done, Tom. Yes, uh, so that's now two 0 because I wanted. Piastri and he turns around and said Piastri straight away. Oh, did he? So he bugged uh, me up. So, and every time I go and vote for someone, it yeah. goes horribly wrong. I voted for Lewis. I voted yeah, oh, for wait, Norris. Wait, wait, wait. Lewis, <laughs> don't even talk about that. <laughs> We've got some bits on here about Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Tom got the prediction right for this for this uh, last race, unfortunately, again. So now I'm 2 0 down with seven races to go. Well, you still got time. Yeah, I've just got to try and make sure I get the predictions in first. Well, I'll let you choose, and then I'll say Tom's one, so... <laughs> oh, all right. Tom won't stand a chance next week. <laughs> <laughs> when he sees the views go through the roof on this video, <laughs> you're fired! <laughs> so, but yeah, so um, he got the predictions right, I got it absolutely wrong. Driver of the day, I think we've got a difference of opinion here. Who did you vote? Well, yeah, I voted Ollie Behrman. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. Um, I thought he done really, really well. Young, young lad, um, thrown in at the deep end, really, and um, had quite a successful weekend, really. I thought he. I know he had the little knock, didn't he? Yeah, in he, practice, he's kind of had the measure of his experienced teammate Nico Hulkenberg. Didn't exactly. He? Yes. So, Which you said stormed off at the end anyway. Yeah, apparently, according to his notebook, after the race, Nico Hulkenberg decided to storm mm. off in a hissy fit because he wasn't happy that apparently he pressed the wrong button on his steering wheel. Which That's allowed his him fault. through. <laughs> <laughs> he got so, yeah. Uh But my driver of the day, I went slightly different. I went for Franco Colapinto. Yes. Two races in, and he's already scored quadruple the points of what Logan Sargent done in 18 months. 18 months, yeah. So, Sorry. and more credit to him as well, in my opinion, because I thought, in fairness, an Argentinian kid that had come in and paid his way. Yep. And actually, he's proved that he's got more talent than what was seen. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, Piastri got it on the day, um, and hats off to him, he did drive a good race. Yeah. Faultless. He Absolutely faultless. Apparent, didn't he? Yeah. Um, he had Leclerc and Perez biting at the bit the whole way and he kept his call, didn't stack it and yeah. done a good job. So hats off to him for a good drive, but I still was quite pleased for What do you think about the... I think there's a general thing going around and I was actually thinking this when I was watching the race. This year, hopefully, Lando gets the championship, but there's now a slight thing now where people thinking that Piastri well, might have... Piastri could get it as well. That it's well, yeah, it's math mathematically possible. possible. So, um, yeah, they're, well, they're both going for it, aren't they? So They can't pull team um, on when he's getting close like he is. No, it would have been interesting to see uh, where Lando would have come if he was higher up or started higher up the grid. So, um, mm. but, yeah, uh, I don't think Lando's since the last race where Piastri got him on that corner. Um, I don't think Lando was expecting that, mm -hmm. and um, I think he's still a bit butt hurt, shall we say? Yeah, I think there's just so. a general thing going around at the moment. A lot of people think that Piastri's got a higher level to achieve 
because mm. uh, he's at well this is only his second year isn't it exactly and he's already up there with Lando so, so yes could Lando have his team taken away from him if he's not careful possibly possibly Piastri's got a higher ceiling yeah. um, race rating we usually me and Tom usually rate a race out of 10 what do you reckon what I'll do I reckon it, as you're the guest I'm going to give it to be fair I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 an 8 out of 10 yeah I'll agree with that yeah it was a good one it kept me away yeah, <laughs> so, normally I nod <laughs> off or fast forward a bit because as per normal I had to watch the race really late um, so normally I'll fast forward, uh, fast forward and things like that but I actually enjoyed watching the race so it was a good one yeah it was a good one it was a good one so uh, lap by lap when we go through obviously all the action that happened so on lap one I put that there was a great start by Leclerc because he stormed away from Paul yes um but obviously lance stroll had his puncture in contact with yuki sonoda yep so that buggered up his race uh lap two i put down that norris gained three places already and then by lap eight he was up five places he was just overtaking like it was fun wasn't he he was going for it wasn't he so, so but i think that's the advantage of azerbaijan it's such a good track for doing overtaking on yes yeah well it's got that lovely straight so yeah you know um yeah. Lap 15, uh, Norris holds up the charge in Perez to help Piastri, which I thought was quite funny, being the fact that it was supposed to be Piastri doing the team orders. Team I, I did, I did enjoy it. Um, I did find it amusing. Um, but would I have done that if it was Norris? I don't know. <laughs> uh, especially after being had on that corner. Um I think I would have gone, no, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to hold anyone up. I'd have probably let him pass, to be fair. <laughs> it be a completely or, different race, Or gave it? him a really good slip string down the thing <laughs> and say, right, go get him. Um, but yeah, no, um, I thought Norris was a very good team player. He'd done the job well and didn't argue, just went, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And he done it, so. And the thing yeah. is now is he's helping Piastri get too close. That's the only worry, isn't it? Well, this is it, but he's still done it. So hats off to him for doing it. And because of Lando on lap 16, uh, Piastri successfully got the uh, pit stop over Perez. Yep. So it kept him ahead. Uh, it was quite calm, really, for the majority of the middle part of the race. Lap 20, I put down a, a brave dive by Piastri to take P1 from the clerk in the turn one. Yes. I didn't think he was going to make the corner, in fairness. I didn't. I thought he was going to go straight on there, but <laughs> he um, he somehow managed it and, yeah, done a great overtake, wasn't he? He did. It, it was a great it was, one. It was good. Um, and then lap, 20, uh, lap 24, sorry, uh, Norris, hard defending on Verstappen. At one stage, Verstappen had to leave the track, didn't he? You see that one? Yes, yeah. You, that was a bit tense at a one stage. A bit tense at one point. But, I wonder yeah. if Nor Norris sort of um, brake tested him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Uh, lap 28 and 33, Leclerc was all over Piastri and he just couldn't brake late enough, mm. as we know now, because his rear yeah. tyres were buggered, weren't they? Yeah, the, the thing is as well, um, I think they said Piastri on the first stint um, had been saving his tyres too much, hadn't he? Mm. Um, so I think that's why Leclerc seemed so fast in the first stint. Um, because I was wondering why Leclerc is not getting past him because he was so much faster. Um, but yeah, they come over the radio and said that he'd been saving his tyres, Piastri, too much. And which yeah. was his net, yeah, that was his um, his negative side, wasn't it? He yes, was, he was bad at trashing his tyres, wasn't it? His yep. first year, yeah. Um, Lap 33, the top three was covered by 0.8 seconds with Perez closing, which we covered. And then lap 34, uh, Russell overtakes Verstappen in the turn one for P6. Not a great race for Verstappen. Try not smiling with that bit. We're <laughs> <laughs> um, getting a yeah. lot of scroffy Dutch people at the moment. I know, I know. I think we should clear it up and say that no one actually hates him, do they? Um, I just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No. He's um, he's frustrated in that car at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he's throwing his toys well out of the pram at the yeah. moment, isn't he? Yeah. And it's not right. I mean, I think they say it's something to do with the floor. They've changed something on the design. Funny, since Adrian's gone, isn't it? He's gone... Yeah, yeah so... that's it. Straight away. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've changed something on the floor and it seems to have buggered the car, right? Oh, it's suit and Perez. Yeah. I, I did see something today. It came up on my phone. and turned around and said, Red Bull finally listening to Perez. Apparently, this is what he's been banging on about for months. Yeah. About these problems. So, well, yeah, but is it Suit and Perez, but not Max? Mm. So, you know, um, 
Who knows? Who yeah. knows? So it's all rather tense in the Red Bull yeah. camp at the moment. I think I'd still like to see Max up there chasing with them as well. So I think for the credibility that if Lando does get the championship this year, it can't be because Max has nosedived. Yes. Because otherwise everyone would be like, Everybody's oh, going to say, well, the car was awful and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd like to see them sort of square up with each other and 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 go for it pretty evenly. And... Although in Austria that didn't go down very well, did it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Two best mates in gaming. <laughs> no, well, there's no mates in, um, in love and war, is there, or they say so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Lap 42, I've got um, a drift race for Piastri and Leclerc. I thought that was a cool shot. Uh, that was a very cool shot. I hope everyone saw that. Um, that was, that, that was. was more like drifting, wasn't it? Yeah. That, was, yeah, it that was, is just two drivers that were absolutely pushing the yeah, crap out of Yeah, I, I did actually see that moment. And, um, yeah, that was that was cool because Piastri come round sideways and then Leclerc followed. Leclerc followed, didn't he? Like, yeah, exactly the same thing. You can so, do what I can do. Yeah, very the, good. The way the old black tire uh, the tire mark on the curb. On the curb. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then lap forty nine, Norris overtakes for overtakes for Stappen for P six, and what a comeback yes. after his qualifying issues. Yep, which seems to be it was someone in the uh, McLaren camp told him to abort his lap by accident. Oh really? Yeah, apparently the yellow flag came up on the board, then it went instantaneously to white because it was just because Ocon was going slow, and by that point McLaren said box box. So that's why it buggered up his Q1. Ah. So it was a cock up by McLaren by the looks of it. Although right. he did bugger it up anyway because the last corner he ran wide. Ah, right. So I don't yeah. think he was going to improve much. No. Uh, and then lap 50, all hell breaks loose of a yeah. 52 lap race. Perez dives down the inside of the clerk, Sainz takes Perez, and then they both end up in a wall with lots of carbon fibre. I said to you it almost looked orchestrated uh, that basically Ferrari had told him just to take Perez out at <laughs> all costs. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I don't know how science has got away with that one personally. Um, you think science is at fault? I think science was at fault. He could he knew Perez was there. Um, he had plenty of room just to stay on that line and have a drag race down there, but he he was trying yeah. to cut him off. Um, Karen Chanduk had the old video of it, and you see that you got the white line. Science is right over on it, and all of a sudden he just goes whack. Yeah. And you're exactly. like, seriously? Yeah. Um, I I felt for Perez because that was probably one of his best races in a long time. Yeah, it was. Um, and to be taken out like that, I, yeah, I, I felt sorry for him, really. I did, because it um, probably would have been a good confidence yeah. boost for him. Um, but how science has got away with that, I do not know. Yeah, he's definitely got away with it. Um, so. And then, uh, so yeah, in the results, we'll see we've got Oscar Piastri, who's won the race, with Charles Leclerc second, and George Russell, yet again, there to pick up pieces. Yep. In third. So well, you've got to be there to well, be in it to win it, they say. So You have? Um, yeah, bit of a lucky third place, but he was there to pick up the pieces, really. So As he was great. in Austria when they all came together and he picked up the win. <laughs> yeah, so, so he's making a habit of it at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Uh, and Lando Norris finished fourth and closes the championship gap to 59 points on Max. But now, more importantly, for McLaren, they've now taken the Constructors' Championship lead. 20 points ahead. I know. So, go on, McLaren. Yeah, well, McLaren. And to be perfectly honest, you know, um, McLaren... They're only, it's like Ted said, they're only worried about the constructors, you know. Yeah. It, it's, it, that's what they're there for. You know, the only person that's worried about the constructors is Lando or Piastri or Max, you know. Yeah. Or, or you know, the, yeah, so. Yeah, it's all about the um, the uh, Constructors' Championship for McLaren because it's all about the money, isn't it? You know, they exactly. get an absolute bomb. Get that Is that heads. not tickling you? <laughs> I, I wonder what that was. Oh, it's a fly. <laughs> Um, fly in the hub. Verst yeah. <laughs> uh, Verstappen uh, finished in fifth. Where his pa where's his pace gone? Which is what I put in the notes. Yeah. So he's gone a bit at the moment. Alonso for Aston Martin in sixth. Uh, but then I put Williams, amazing. Alex Albon seventh and Colo Pinto eighth. eighth. A young Argentinian. Absolutely brilliant. Ten Williams. points in one weekend. Yep. They looked very very good. So, Finally what we saw forward. of them anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, not a lot of TV coverage. Uh, and Colo Pinto, I thought as well, I put a shout out for him as well because when he stacked it in practice, I was yeah. like, oh God, they've got another bloody um, sergeant on their hands. <laughs> yeah. But he picked himself up and one of the hardest circuits in F1, yeah. although you've got the hardest one coming up next, I think. Uh, Lewis, your man, 
Ninth, not great, was it? Disaster. Um, don't know what's going on there, really. You reckon they're starting to finally pull him away from the car a little bit? Possibly, Ready yeah. for next year? Possibly. Seems a bit funny, isn't it? Because as George up there on the podium. Well, yeah, well, he, he wouldn't have been on the podium, but yeah, he was. Um, but, yeah, he, he said... Can you see how I'm having to drive this thing, didn't he, over the way? Well, radio. I did say, I haven't read the article yet, but I did say he turned around and said they put someone on the car wrong. Oh, really? Yeah, when they put the car back together after he's changed his engine, right. after qualifying, apparently they put something on it wrong. <laughs> they put one of the parts on, and he was, that's why he kept saying about this car's undrivable, I can't drive it like this. Right. So whether they put something wrong in the suspension or something. Oh. But I haven't read the full article Well, then he yet. didn't do too bad, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got... <laughs> he's in a wonky donkey <laughs> as such. <laughs> so, driving like that. Yeah, so, um, but there you go. And then fellow Brit, Ollie Behrman, in 10th, so another point as a super sub, that's two in two, scored in Jeddah. Yep. And now scored in, uh, which, in fairness, like Colapinto, I mean, there's two hard circuits to make your debut on. Yep. Uh, but I think, as you said, at the end of the day, to get it in a house and beating his uh, teammate Hulkenberg in the quality in the race, I put Alpine down as absolutely terrible with Pierre Gasly in 11th and Ocon in 15th. Dreadful. Awful. Absolutely um, awful. I, I I worry what's going to happen there, actually. I think they've got a big full sale out in the garage, haven't they? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Someone needs to come along. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then Salva. I mean, it could get worse. I mean, Salva are like the worst of the worst. Oh. Grand New Joe in 14th and Bottas was last of the finishes in 16th. Again. He doesn't deserve to be in that car. And there. He should be. Ooh, you're going to hurt Tom's feelings. He's going to be crying when you hear that, when he hears that. No, he needs to be in a better car. He's a better driver than that. Oh, you think he deserves to be in the... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, I think that's quite sad, really, um, for Bottas. Especially as this looks like how it's all going to end, doesn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. I think if I was him, I'd probably get out. Uh, why does mm. he want to be driving a car around in last place all the time or, or very close to it? And Audi must be thinking to themselves, what the hell have we bought? Well, yeah, let's just hope that they do something with it. Yeah, sack everyone and start again, I think, at the moment. Because yeah, the worst team and they've got one of the better budgets in the sport. So when you consider what Williams have done from the doldrums they were in the beginning of the season, no spare car. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely awful, overweight. Um, so yeah, anything else you want to cover by Azerbaijan? Not really. Um, like I said to you, that there weren't apart from the top three, you, we didn't really get to see much of yeah. what went on elsewhere. Um, so yeah, but no, nothing really. Cool. Just quite an exciting race for a change. Yeah, at least you picked the right week to be coming in. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> could have been so, worse. Could have been Monaco, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have come in. I'd let you do that one on your own. Oh, thanks, one well, now <laughs> Um So, uh, the news, we'll go on to the news. So, it looks like at the moment, Gabriel Bortoletto is now the favourite for the Sauber drive. Right. Formula 2 kid. Up oh, yeah. for Formula 2 championship this year. Um, at, interestingly, managed by Fernando Alonso. Oh, right. So, it looks like he's put a word in with his ex-Ferrari boss, Bonotto, and said, promote him, give him the drive. Oh. So it looks like he's going to get announced within the next couple of weeks and Valtteri Bottas has now confirmed that he'll consider IndyCar for next year. There we go. He's a brave man if he does that. There's news. I did say that whether... I, I don't blame him. Yeah. I think I would. Um, but it's like I said to you, why does he want to be driving around in last place? Yeah, he's better a, than that. He is, he is better than that. I'd be sad to see him go, though, and I'm sure Tom will be even sadder. Yeah, well, you think saying he's going to get a bloody yeah. calendar in here. It's like, that ain't happening. I just wish he'd do something with the haircut. The haircut's awful. Oh, Not yeah. Tom, Valtteri. Yeah, well, yeah, Tom ain't got much hair, is he? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, Valtteri with his mullet is a bit dodgy, isn't it? Yes. It's uh, obviously, the big news between races, between our last show and today, is that Adrian Newey's finally confirmed at Aston Martin. £30 million pound a year on a five-year contract, and he's confirmed as a shareholder. Oh. So he's now managing technical partner. So 2026, oh, Red Bull, right. uh, Aston Martin, Honda for the championship. Well, <laughs> Honda were quite strong towards the end, weren't they? So Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that's going to be exciting. It's, all the pieces are all falling in place for them, because yeah. apparently next on uh, Daddy Stroll's list is Max Verstappen. Oh. Apparently. He wants Max Verstappen as his lead driver and he's willing to put Lance Stroll over into the World Endurance Championship and Le Mans. Get him out of the way. Well, so, yeah. 
I I didn't say too much because uh, <laughs> I don't want people hating me. But, um, don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, might might be a better place for him. <laughs> <laughs> might be at a moment, will not it? Yeah. But it's looking like we're going to yeah. have uh, a Adrian Newey design car driven by Max Verstappen, which has got Honda power, just green this time. Mm, so who's, so going to be with um, Max Alonso? Is going to stay there? But I reckon Alonso will either go in twenty twenty six, and he said that no matter what happens, he'll be driving something in twenty twenty seven. So they reckon he'll go over to the Aston Martin sports car team, or he'll sign a one-year contract extension. Right, but it'll be. I was under by the then. impression that Max may go to Mercedes, but yeah, I think Mercedes have said they're all in on Kimi now. Are they? Yeah, Young and Ellie, and I don't think they want to kick out George Russell if, as long as he gets rid of his tendency to stack it. Yes. Yeah, well, he only tends to stack it when he's got someone behind him. Yeah fighting at the bit and he loses loses it I think he's probably <laughs> looking in his wing mirrors too much rather than <laughs> panic stays <he's> like, <laughs> yeah. um and then um for on Fernando Alonso he did say unfortunately that he's not going to have the time to benefit from Adrian Newey's cars because he'll have oh. one or two years maximum yeah so well it's getting time for him to go isn't it it's getting that way isn't it at the end of the day Cold. there's a few drivers I think like Alonso Bottas who else you got now? That's probably getting a bit on. Get Lewis. out. Yeah, Lewis. Although mm. I know you don't want to say him, and no one mm. really does, but it's getting close, isn't it? It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah, Maybe it's... another year or two. There's um, a few drivers that I think need to kind of give way to the new young breed because there's a lot of good youngsters coming up. There is, yeah. So um, even though again Tom will be crying because we're saying about Lewis leaving the sport. I don't. I dare, dread to think what Tom would actually do. I think he'll go in a year's mourning. Yeah, he ain't gonna be happy, is he? <laughs> no, he'll be dressed in black the whole time. And then this is a good one for you because I see what you say about this one. Adrian Newey has said that Max Verstappen, Verstappen is unfairly demonised by Sky and the British press. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, um, look, it's like any sport, isn't it? football or rugby or or, or or any sport you're always going to have your favorites and you're always going to have the teams and the people that you don't like um you know i get enough stick for the football team i support um, yeah, um football, yeah, yeah well this is it so but um yeah you're always going to get people haters out there aren't you um like i said to you i don't think any of it, I think we all agree that Max is probably one of the best talents on on the track. Yeah, he's naturally, isn't uh, he? One he's of the naturally a great driver. It's just sometimes his attitude um, basically stinks, doesn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, well, how me and Tom have said so many times about how his engineer puts up with his attitude sometimes. Yeah. I'd be like, you know what, stuff you. I'm on, you're on your own. Mm. You drive a car. I just wish he'd be a little bit more humble and. Um, you know, uh, just just be like he is outside of Formula One. Well, you said this about his yeah. gaming channel. Yeah, his gaming different. channel when he's with uh, with um, Lando and that. Um, I actually laugh out loud when I watch them. Um, but then, I suppose he puts his game face on and for driving and for work and. And yeah, he turns into a different person. Turns into a bit of an animal, but in yeah. that respect, he kind of reminds me a little bit like Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna was like that. Yeah, like have God you got, outside the sport? You know, um, Lewis. He's when he was fighting with Rosberg. Um, I I disliked Lewis a little bit then because Lewis and Rosberg were supposed to be friends, and then he turns around and says, "We were never friends." Lewis mm. says, and I'm like. No, you were. You shared rooms together, <laughs> you went out together, you know, you raced together, you were friends. Um, so that's quite a nasty thing to say. Um, but it's all psychological games and things like that, isn't mm, it? The greatest ones are ruthless, yeah. aren't they? Senna was. Look yeah. at Fernando. Yeah. Fernando was ruthless when he, anybody's teammate. Hey, Lewis has been ruthless in the past. Yeah. You know, they all have. Alonso, he was pretty ruthless at times. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, well. I don't know whether I quite uh, agree with the whole because I had someone getting very passionate the other day on our channel about it. I don't think Sky demonise him, and I don't think it's an anti Verstappen thing from the press. And mainly because what maybe this gentleman didn't realise is that Sky do the worldwide coverage. 
Right. They basically provide all the coverage for the yeah. other countries and their commentary. I, I, I don't see how Sky's demonised them. I think they're just saying. I think, I think you and Tom might have a little bit, but well, that's because I can't stand him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's an arrogant prat, but you know. But that's uh, just my opinion. For you what need to worth. watch the gaming channels. He's not as arrogant as what you think. Yeah, but, you surprised me with that. Um, yeah, watch it. Uh, he, he, it, like I say, he has me laughing out loud, and I just think, why can't you be this person on the track, mm. or not when you're racing, but you know, just like that outside or. Just a little bit. And people have got memories, haven't they? I mean, it, it, yeah. people have still got a big hang up about 2021. Yep. They got a big hang up about when he landed up on um, Lewis's head at Monza. Yep. That time. And then obviously what he'd done with Lando this year at Austria. Yep. And he's just kind of like. Well, sometimes he drives his car like he's playing his gaming. Yeah. You know, bang, oh, that uh, doesn't matter because they're playing a the game. But on the track, you're not playing a game, are you? And he but. doesn't help himself either when he keeps turning around and says, I won't stay around forever. I yeah. don't like the sport. I don't like this. I don't yeah. like You're getting paid 40, 50 million pounds a year to drive the job you've always wanted. That's what I'm saying. Be a little bit more humble. Yeah. And um, I think people, the British public, will probably um, like him a bit more. Mm. Um, but I've got friends and people I know that absolutely love him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of it. No, nor am I. But so, shall we do our Singapore Grand Prix preview? Yes, we've got another one, and you've got some notes on this one, haven't you? Mm, yes, I have. So we've, we're coming from Singapore on Sunday, um, where we are at the Marina Bay Street Circuit. So yes, I'll let you do your notes first. Well, it was um, Formula One's first night race. It was so. Yep, I, I always think, even though everyone else is jumping on the bandwagon, I always think it's a pretty cool thing. Yes, um, I know that they've signed. I don't know how new it is, but a new contract um, to remain on the schedule until at least 2028. So they will do their 20th anniversary, but with only 18 races. Because of COVID. Because of COVID. Shut them down for two years. But um, yeah, it will be their 20th anniversary. So hopefully they'll put on some sort of spectacle or something like that. Hopefully. I like all the, the fireworks and everything they always do because that's always quite cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did read that it was also the first wet race or night wet race. So but oh, okay, then yeah. if they were the first um, night race, then, you know, it's probably probable that it was going to be the first wet night race. I know they were always wet. petrified about saying about the, the year that they would ever have a wet race there, they thought it was going to be undrivable because of the glare, didn't they, under yeah, the lights? this is but it. That proved nothing. That I think they've had two, nothing. haven't they? Yes. I 2022, two, I think it was wet as well. Yeah. If I remember, I remember right. remember reading on notes this morning, and I was yeah. like, ah, oh, they've had two then. Yeah. Um, it has approximately 1,600 custom-made lights around a 5.75 kilometres around the uh, Marina Bay, so... A lot um, of light bulbs. A lot of light bulbs, yeah, a lot of light as well, because I forget how many times brighter they said they were to, for the, it's for the TV coverage as well. The TV coverage, and I remember them saying as well years and years ago that basically it trips their bodies out because they have to go on a different time schedule because yep. the race is overnight. Yep. But it's basically like being in daylight. Yep. It's so bright. Hmm. Um, and the track is 4.94 kilometers long with 19 turns. A race dis uh, the race distance is 62 laps, which equates to, well, about 306 kilometers, just over. Wow. So. No wonder they're hot and sweaty afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> I know that they, I, I did read something uh, yesterday or, or today that, um, Oh, that it runs over in the two hour mark. There's quite a few races that are finished on the two hour yeah, mark. Yeah, usually me and Tom were saying that last week. Yeah, usually Azerbaijan so, and Singapore go to yeah, timer, don't they? Yeah. Never makes so, it to the full end. Never makes it to the full end. So, and Lewis, our man, or I'm my man, <laughs> anyway, um, he holds the lap record of a time of one minute, 35 seconds, and eight 
hundreds of a second or something along those lines. 135.867 or something. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's six drivers that have shared the victories. Um, and Vettel has the most wins. Which there. surprised me when you said that. Yeah, I'd done you a little quiz over the phone the other yeah, night, didn't I? I was guessing it like three different times. Them all. <laughs> um, I spoke to Isaac and he actually done quite well on that. Did he? Yeah, I, I went for the, like, the regulars, I was like, Lewis? Yeah. No. Verstappen? No. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm running out of options yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, Vettel with five wins, Lewis with four, Alonso has two. He won the first one in 2008. And Rosberg, Perez and Sainz all have one win each. Happy days. Happy days. And then I put some notes down as well because I didn't want to be outdone. No. <laughs> Can't be outdone. Uh, the safety car has made at least one appearance in every Singapore Grand Prix. Hence why it never reaches its uh, lap yeah. count. Yeah. And then I thought a fun fact on there was spare a thought for the drivers who endure sauna-like conditions in a cockpit as they can lose up to three kilograms of fluid. That's During the course of a, race. a lot of fluid. Uh, isn't it? And Lewis doesn't have a bottle in his thing, does he? Apparently he doesn't does he drink. Not? Or, or, or he doesn't drink. Uh, he has said it quite a few times. It would be minging they ran out. Yeah, it would be like tea, wouldn't it? Yeah, he did say the water's like warm. So, really? yeah, it would be a bit miserable. I, I remember when they used to race around Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah. And they used to say the same thing. It was so hot by the end of the race, there's no point written, no point drinking it. That's three kilos of fluid, that's a lot of fluid. I couldn't afford to lose more than three kilos. Well, I'd, you'd I'd be gone. Yeah, I'd disappear, wouldn't I? I'd just be a puddle. <laughs> you stood up like a broom. <laughs> I have to make sure I stand up tonight, otherwise it'd be, yeah. I should have stood tonight. He sat on six cushions. <laughs> Very. <laughs> I won't edit that out. <laughs> um, you hope you choke on your tea. <laughs> Uh, no driver has recorded more than three retirements in Marina Bay's circuit history. Yep. So it's pretty good for retirements, even though it's quite a crash fest. And Red Bull have had more podium finishes here than any other team. Yes. Don't think it's going to happen this weekend, do you? No. Um, I think, um, was it Science or someone put a stop to that? Or? He did, yeah. That was my next one. Carlos signs his victory at the 23 race for an end to Red Bull's 15 race streak. So, and this year... I don't think they're going to be up there. And then as far as the memorable moments, uh, th to be honest, there was only one that stood out. You mentioned about the crash from three into one. Yes, that was the two Ferraris. I can't remember what year it was, but it was, um, you know, it was Raikkonen and... Um, Is that Alonso? It might or Vettel? Have, no, I think it might have been Vettel. No, I remember they got sandwiched. Was it a red ball? They went like that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, uh, literally. <laughs> Yeah, it's very amusing as well because Lewis went off and won the race and uh and, oh, that's why uh, you remember it. Yeah. <laughs> he went he sailed past and watched them all go into the thing, so it was lovely. And then it means good. the Lewis result is a good one. Um and then memorable moment for me though, the one that stands out was Crashgate, which is obviously unfortunately gonna be one of the things that Singapore's always yes. remembered for. Yeah. When Flavio Briatori ordered Nelson PK Jr. to crash on purpose, which is yeah. still rumbling on. Um, which caused the safety car. And that meant Fernando Alonso, his teammate, won the race. Yeah. Meant and he that... got sacked for that as well, didn't he? Yeah, Pico got sacked. Yeah. Flavio Briatore got banished for years until he got his thing overturned, his ban yeah. overturned. And lots of people got sacked from Renault for it as yeah. well. Um, yeah. And Massa also made his pit stop, cocked it up, ripped the fuel hose off, yes. lost the championship points, which meant that uh, Lewis Hamilton won the championship. Yep. Yeah. So, because it was 2008. So, that always is the one that sticks out for me. And that is the one that uh, Felipe Massa's court case is all built over, trying to get the money compensation from Formula 1. Right. Because he's like, if it wasn't for that race, I would have won the championship. Mm. So, yeah. Well. I suppose we better put in some predictions. Uh, Tom can do a, uh, a prediction in the in the notes because he's going to watch his back tonight from Sunny Spain. Well, I'll do Tom's prediction for what's, him. All right. What's, what are you predicting? Yeah, I'll, we'll pick Valtteri for him. <laughs> Bad luck, Tom. <laughs> so good luck with that, Tom. Yeah, he'll, he'll be happy for that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, who are you predicting? Oh, well, if I predict right, do I get to come on and say? If you predict right, you can replace you can, Tom permanently. If, if I get it right, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, okay. if you get it right, yeah. Oh, you're really asking me. Um, <laughs> Who's your bet for this weekend? I'll let you have first pick. Oh, don't pick Norris. I. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, uh, I'm going to go Max. Max? Yeah. Really? Yep. 
Well, we haven't even going through the red balls at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to go Max. Oh, okay. Um, he he's got something to prove. He needs to get out of there. So I'm going to, with all the doubters on that <laughs> slot and, uh, and moaning about you guys, um, I'm going to say Max. You're going to say Max. Yeah. I'm not going to go for a McLaren. I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc. Because I think they've got the pace and I think they're going to take a valuable lesson from Azerbaijan. The yep. circuits are very similar and I think they'll sort out their tyre life yep. this week and kind of sort their pit stops out properly. And I think Charles de Klerk's going to win. Which right. means he'll have a really terrible race, get knocked out in Q1 and be nowhere probably. Yeah. With Why my not? record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With my record, the way it's going at the moment. Um, so that's our predictions. And yes. Thomas, let, Tom will let us know in the comments below what he thinks. Because good luck with Valtteri Bottas, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Qualified 19, finished 18. <laughs> he might get appointed as a few safety cars. So. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. I'm going to leave that for Tom. He loves Valtteri, doesn't he? He does, so, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think he's kind of secretly in love with him, I think. Oh, I love him. you. <laughs> and second, second, I think if he could have a threesome with Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, he'd be away. Oh dear. <laughs> Not a good thought. <laughs> so yeah. So anything else you want to add for Singapore, mate? Um, let's hope it's a good race, and I actually hope for a little bit of rain. I hope it's a wet one. Spice it up a bit. Yeah, and Lewis always does quite well in the wet. Doesn't he? he does, so. doesn't he? And I'd like to see Lewis do well before the end of the season. Um, yeah, I do as well. Um, and you know, I'm not going to be on here often, so I am going to say it worries me that he's going to Ferrari because Ferrari have a good way of either making or breaking a great driver. Yeah, um, uh, they done that with Vettel, I think, didn't they? They ruined him, they did. Um, and Fernando so probably should have at least won two championships. Though. I know it's a dream of Lewis's going to Ferrari, but. Thing is, did he sign though on the understanding that Adrian Newey was going there and they didn't pull it uh, off? Yeah, so, possibly. But as you are here, and I know you are a big Lewis supporter though, what do you think? Do you think he's going to be able to stand up to Charles Leclerc? Oh, yeah, I think he'll have Charles uh, measured pretty well. You reckon? Yeah, I do. It's just, um, I just worry about Ferrari. Mm. Um, I really do. We mock uh, them yeah. all the time about their constant different plans, like A, B, C, D, D, D F. Yeah, well, they were at it again this week, weren't they? Mm. Um, yeah, I, but I think Lewis may bring a bit of sort of stability and um, wiseness to the team. Mm. So that might help um, help things a bit, but yeah. I think I over thought... a race, I think he's going to get him. I think over qualifying, which even Lewis has said that he's not qualifying good enough lately, I think Charles is probably going to win the qualifying head to head. Yeah. But I think over the course of the year, Lewis would be better for the race results. Mm. And if there's a result there to be taken, you can never discount him, can you? No. no. As he's proved this year twice already. Um, and I think with someone like that there, are they going to concentrate more on Lewis and build the car around Lewis maybe for a couple of years? Do you reckon he's signed as a number one? Or equal? Oh, I reckon an equal because he never seems to ever have a number one role, does he? No. Um, he when Bottas was there. Yeah, the yeah, with, with Bottas. But, but Bottas just, yeah, he was a great number two driver. Uh, mm. Lewis openly says that was his best teammate. Yeah, he has said that over the years, hasn't yeah. he? So, but so, I wanted to ask you that, being that I know you're a big yeah, fan. Yeah, it, it worries me him going to Ferrari. I know it's like the end of his career, and um, it's always been a dream of his to go to Ferrari. But I just don't want him to make him look stupid at the end. Do yeah, you get what I mean? That's my that's my only thing because Ferrari they either get it right or they get it very wrong. Very wrong. And that's yeah. the problem, isn't it? Yeah. And, if he did sign on the agreement thinking that Adrian Newey was going to be there I know they've now got Mercedes guy Loic Sarah over there so at least yeah. it, I mean, <laughs> they're taking half of Mercedes over with them yeah. so although he ain't got Bono going with him though we did come no, up on the other way that's sad so there, he's going to have a new Italian engineer he's going to have um, he's going to have to learn Italian isn't he yeah all the drivers have to learn Italian normally don't they yep. do they yeah I think so hmm. yeah I think if you look back over history um, I don't know whether it's in their contract, but 
Yeah, they they all have to sort of learn Italian. It's going to be a culture shock. First time he's never driven for a British-based team as well. I know. Living I in know. Italy. I hope he likes spaghetti. <laughs> or pizza. Whatever. I'd love it. If someone said to me, you can come and drive for a, or go and work for a Ferrari in Italy, I'd be like, yeah, I love the food. I think most of the time he spends um, in Monaco, doesn't he? Is, am I right in saying that or am I wrong? Yeah, most of them are there now, isn't yeah. it? It's a tax haven, isn't it? So it's not that far from Monaco over to Italy. So. Not in his private jet. No, exactly. So. <laughs> so, but cool. Anything else, mate? Are you all happy? I'm all happy. Happy yeah, days. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for being a guest. Can I just say the hub is different. <laughs> Not as glamorous as you thought it was, is it? No, no. We've got, so. uh, we've got ideas and I've got plans for the 2025 season. Yep. Because if 2025 continues to be as high, well, I'm hoping it's going to be brilliant. Yep. Is that we've got one year of everything being frozen, so it's getting nice and close. And we've got a few. I've got a few Good. plans of different things I'm going to do. Good. We're going to have, invest in it. So very exciting. Not as glamorous as what you thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all done on a budget here. Oh well, well. So it's all done on the shoe screen. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, so, but thank you very much for coming in. No, today, mate. thank you for having me. It's been lovely, and um, I'll look forward to taking your place on when Perry, uh, uh, when um, Max wins at the weekend. Yes. Yeah, permanently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't call it MFDP though. That sounds really weird. No. <laughs> well, we did say what it actually would mean. Yeah, you know, so we're not doing that. <laughs> not rebranding it. No. But yeah, so thank you very much, mate. And um, Tom right. will be back with us uh, next week yep. for our Singapore Grand Prix review. And then we've got a couple of filler weeks where we we'll do some specials because we've got a month off again mm. before the American we've got trip. Got a month off. We can take you fishing, me and Tom. Oh God, no. Oh. I, don't, I don't do bugs and sleeping on the bed and on the floor and no, no, no. sleeping with me you'll be fine <laughs> if you think I'm topping and tailing with you <laughs> or either that or I'm big spoon not a little spoon right. <laughs> well I will be watching the race by the lake so I might even phone you and if uh Max wins. So. <laughs> we're like, Tom, you're fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but thank you very much, everyone, for watching, no, as always. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back next Monday with our Singapore Grand Prix review. And we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.